Dear students, in this video, we will discuss a very important transport process occurring in our cells and that is the sodium potassium pump. In 1957, Jens Christian Skow discovered an enzyme, sodium potassium ATPase, that serves as a sort of biological pump to transport ions. And he was awarded the Nobel Prize for his work for the discovery of this enzyme and hence the sodium potassium pump in 1997. And this discovery marked an important step in understanding of how ions get into and out of cells. The sodium potassium pump is particularly significant because excitable cells, especially nerve cells, depend on this pump to respond to stimuli and transmit impulses. So let's see what is meant by a sodium potassium pump and the mechanism behind it. Outside the cell membrane, the concentration of sodium ions is small, whereas inside the cell, the concentration of potassium ions is more. The sodium ion concentration within the cell has to be kept about 10 times lower than that in the extracellular fluids. Whereas the potassium ion concentration inside the cell is about 30 times higher than that in the extracellular fluids. To remember the concentration of a sodium and potassium ions inside and outside the cell, just think of a salty banana. We know that bananas are very rich in potassium ions. Now if it is salted, then the outer side of the banana will be rich in sodium ions. Similar is the case with the human or animal cells also. Outside the cell, the concentration of sodium ions is more, whereas inside the cell, the concentration of the potassium ions is more. So this concentration gradient across the cell membrane is to be maintained for the efficient functioning of several physiological processes. And that is done with the help of sodium potassium pump which is an active transport pump that transports sodium ions out of the cell in exchange for potassium ions. Why it is called an active transport? An active transport process is an energy requiring process of pumping molecules and ions across membranes uphill that is against a concentration gradient. And sodium potassium pump is a very good example of active transport process occurring in cells. Since it is an energy requiring process, the energy is supplied by ATP as in other types of cellular activities. The membrane bound enzyme adenosine triphosphatase or ATPase catalyzes the pumping process. So sodium potassium pump is an active transport process or an energy requiring process powered by ATP, adenosine triphosphate and catalyzed by the enzyme adenosine triphosphatase, ATPase. In sodium potassium pump system, the sodium and potassium ions move against large concentration gradients. It moves two potassium ions into the cell where the potassium levels are high and pumps three sodium ions out of the cell and into the extracellular fluid where the concentration of sodium ions is more as you can see here. And we have already seen that outside the cell the concentration of sodium is more and inside the cell the concentration of potassium ions is more. So that means the transport process is occurring from a lower to a higher concentration. And that's why it requires energy which is powered by ATP and catalyzed by the enzyme ATPase. Now let's see an animation on the transport process of sodium and potassium ions across the cell membrane. Here you can see three Na plus ions bind with the enzyme inside the cell and this is powered by ATP. Binding of the three Na plus ions and the hydrolysis of ATP causes the enzyme 
to change its shape in doing so it pumps 3 na plus ions out of the cell at that point 2 k plus ions from outside the cell bind to the enzyme again a conformational change occurs and k plus ions are transported into the cell and this process repeats now let's discuss the mechanism of sodium potassium pump in detail starting from the interior of the cell e1 represents the membrane bound enzyme that is adenosine triphosphatase atpase enzyme e1 has high affinity for sodium ions than potassium ions so the first step is the binding of an atp molecule and 3 na plus ions from inside the cell now the enzyme is phosphorylated to give a phosphoenzyme e1p so in this step atp is hydrolyzed to adp leading to phosphorylation of the enzyme and that is represented as e1p this process that is phosphorylation of the enzyme leads to a conformational change or eversion to give another phosphoenzyme e2p the conformational change exposes the sodium ions to the outside of the cell membrane e2p has low affinity for sodium ions and hence the three sodium ions are released but e2p has high affinity for potassium ions so e2p will bind two k plus ions from outside the cell binding of the two k plus ions causes dephosphorylation of the enzyme which again causes a conformational change that is from e2 to e1 and this will result in the release of 2 k plus ions to the interior of the cell the cycle is complete and e1 is again available for phosphorylation so once again e1 will bind an atp molecule and 3 na plus ions from inside the cell and the process will repeat so here we can say that the enzyme atp combination that is the atpase atp combination acts as a sodium potassium pump the outer surface of the cell wall becomes positively charged because for every 3 sodium ions exported 2 k plus ions are imported or taken in this is how a sodium potassium pump transports sodium and potassium ions across the cell membrane